We're going to be talking to um, Vivian, Vivian Kailoko. Someone who has championed what it means to be a journalist and yes. to be a female as well. We want to hear her story from her perspective, how she lives a life of excellence and how you can learn from her journey to apply whatever drives her to your job as well. Vivian Kailoko is head of news here at City TV and City FM. Good morning, Vivian. Good morning, guys. How are, How are you? you? I'm fine. Eh? Mouthful of words there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> it's going to set you up it's, if you're live it's a, on it's radio. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tongue twister. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you? I'm well. How are you guys? We are very good. We're right, very, very good. Very. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. me. Yeah. Head of news. <laughs> what does it that's take? The, that's a rumor in town. <laughs> <Is there? laughs> <laughs> ah, wow. So, well, I mean, you, 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 your journey clearly has been a very long one, you know, really to this point. Yeah. Um, but I think we want to take a quick look at, um, we, we had, a, I had a conversation with you mm -hmm. um, earlier on. You invaded what? my office yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. But we had a conversation with you. We want to take a look at that. Okay. And then we'll come back and then we'll talk. Yes, and while we're waiting for that, what does it even mean to be head of news? Yeah, it's a lot. You have um, the content that's news programming all on your shoulder because, mm -hmm. you know, journalism or putting news or whatever out comes with a lot of things. There are legal mm -hmm. ramifications. There, um, You know, what you're putting out there. Is it the right thing? Have you spoken to all the people you need to speak to? Mm. The facts are they are accurate. Those, you know, because yeah. we have social media now and mm. everything is out there. Mm. You don't have the luxury of time anymore like before when we had traditional media and it was just, let's say, TV or radio or print. Yeah. Now, before you put your story out, your first cousin has probably posted it already. Yeah. But what most people are looking for is the verification to, to know that this is true and all that. And mm. that's where now we still play a critical role in that. Mm. So as much as you want to put out things, you have to be accurate. So mm. first to press, but yeah. with accuracy. Okay. So that's where we, we find ourselves now. Yeah. And then there are stories that if you put out there and they are not accurate, you're going to jeopardize people's mm. um, reputation. You can even put a country in chaos yeah. based on a reportage you do. Now we have the issue about the destabilization of you know, the economy currently running. Yeah. We have to ensure that whatever you what put out there, out, it's yeah. what it is. It's mm. factually correct. Mm. And you give um, a level playing field and uh, you know, ensure that whoever is involved gets the, yeah. its um, chance to yeah. a free and fair trial, mm. whether it's the media or whatever, ensure that whatever you put out there, you're not saying something that mm. is not right. So you have to deal mm. with all these challenges. At the same time, you have to deal with people who would want to set the agenda mm. for, for the, the news content because mm. it is what it is. You have um, politicians, you have even CSOs, you even have owners of media mm. who want things a certain way or want things to come out a certain way. Now we have the referendum coming yes. on and all that. There's debate yeah. about whether it should go this way or that way. People will deliberately or put in their own to put it out there. We have mm. the issue about the education, whether we should go into the globalized discussion of sexual orientation. Yes. Yes. And it was Absolutely. a big discussion. Yeah, yeah. Now if you don't put out the right thing out there or bring out the issues as it is, and you have your own opinion. So, for example, you want us to go a particular way. Yeah. But the society we find ourselves in, we want to, you know, protect our cultures or, or whatever. Mm. I don't want to mm. use particular words because I have to be politically correct <laughs> and all that. But you have to look at all these things <clears throat> whilst you're um, putting the story across. Yeah. And we always say that some, some of the stories, is difficult not to put yourself into it. Mm. For example, there's a story about human rights, whatever. Yeah. You can clearly see that somebody has been abused, but the powers that be or the legal system or whatever makes it difficult to bring out the issue or to protect this person because mm. the person probably is a poor person, mm. cannot afford any yeah. legal whatever. We know the issue about legal aid and all that. So all these things around that, you as the journalist, you're supposed to ensure that you can tell the story in a way that you bring out the issues yeah. as, as it is and yeah. not form an opinion already. But of course now we have the opinion journalism where 
Jifa can put out her opinion yeah. because she feels this is what this it is supposed to be. Yeah. But you can, whilst you do that, you also have to make sure you're free and fair to everybody involved. In, involved in that Thank story. Thank you very much, Vivian. I will take a look at your conversation with David and then continue our conversation with you in studio. Hi. So this morning, we're going to have a conversation with uh, Vivian Kainoko, who happens to be the head of news, City TV and City FM. Now, what does it take for a lady, a woman, um, to be the head of news of such a large news organization, such a massive brand? Now, her office is right through there. Let's go. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, head of News City TV, City FM. That's, wow. That's a rumor. Big deal. Oh, it's been alleged. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's alleged. <laughs> okay, so help us. What's the typical day in Vicky's life like? It starts as early. It starts at dawn, actually. Yeah. I mean, doing dawn. How early? Um, so I wake up at four. When I wake up at four, I scan to the various out outlets, including mm. my what's mm. happening. Did I miss out on anything while I was asleep? Okay. Was there anything breaking once I was asleep? So I wake up, go through the various media outlets, check mm. mine. Of course, before that, I pray and all that. Mm. And then um, prepare to come to work, have my shower, and then come to work. I have two weeks. So I have a week that I have to be on for 7 or 12 for okay. business rooms. Okay. And I have another week. That's that on radio. Don't, yeah, okay. radio. Mm. That I don't need to be uh, here at 7. But okay. I need to be here in time to talk for the day. Mm. To find news mm. with um, a team of um, other journalists. So that's how the day starts. Okay. Okay. So, um, if I have to do seven, I go do seven, come in, prepare the bulletin. It's usually cooked the day before. Okay. Because, because of time and yeah. the challenges, anything can happen. So, mm. it's usually ready. So, you just go through, make some corrections, package it, mm. and then go in for seven. Mm. And then after that, you plot for the prime, and that's 12 o'clock. Mm. Uh, um, Major news bulletins okay. is at 12 to 12.30. So together with, we have assignment yeah. people yeah. for the week. We discuss the stories, the angles, what we should follow up on, what we should ignore, what should be part of the bulletin, etc. So that's what part. Then we have another part, which is going into the evening. Mm. The various bulletins, we have the eyewitness, the top of the hour ones. But after the prime bulletin, we yeah. do the editorial meeting, okay. where we go through what we've done, what we've missed out on, we have uh, our monitoring and all that. Then I move back into TV, mm. which is still in process, of yes. course. Yes. And then we deal with the CNRs and the 2020s, okay. which are news bulletins. Then mm. we also have the um, current affairs programming. Mm like eyewitness yes. and what the papers are saying, etc. where well, yeah. we also have to feed those um, programs with content and mm. all that. Mm. All so these in there, and then uh, that, that's like a, a typical day sort of. Mm. So, mm. You start your day at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. When do you go to bed, usually? Um, if I'm lucky, 10, 30, 11. If I'm not being wow. So yesterday, for example, uh, I went to bed, I think after 12. Mm. So that's Vivian Kai, local head of news here at City TV and City FM. Now, Vivian, you've achieved a lot mm. in, in your journey as a journalist. What even inspired you to get on this path? Well, I'd always known I wanted to do media, but not necessarily journalism. Um, I lived in London for a bit, mm -hmm. and I used to watch, there was a program called Lose Women. I think they still show it on, uh, okay. I think, ITV or so, or, yeah, ITV. And they had a group of women, about four or five women, and they talk about every issue from economy to women affairs to everything. And I used to admire them a lot because they were so assertive, very articulate. I wanted to do something like that or probably host a show. You know, I also loved when I see women or people 
very assertive, hosting shows, you know, articulate. And I also loved emceeing. But I remember my first um, try at that was a flop. Really? <laughs> it, it, yes, it do go. That was like... <laughs> Why was it a flop? What happened? Well, you know, so, <laughs> so dr during the trials, it was actually a whole week um, okay. in school. And um, during the trials and everything, I mean, it was good. It was going well. And then the day of the event, there were over about a thousand people. Hmm. I came out from the backstage onto the crowd you and I just froze. I was like, hey, <laughs> they're all looking at me. <laughs> they're all looking. And I just froze. And, you know, I had, and the co MC I had, a gentleman, he also froze. So <laughs> <laughs> there was no, you know, you don't <laughs> usually get a co who will push yeah. you, even start for you. Yeah. When he saw the crowd, he came out and said, no, Vivian, you start. I'm like, no, you start. You claim you're, <laughs> you have experience in there. You start. He was like, no, no, you start. So I had to go and start, froze a bit. Fortunately, I had a couple of friends in the back said, you know, like, you could do your, you, you know, you articulate. Do, do, do. So I picked up. But, you know, the, the, the pace of picking up, you know, by the time I picked up, so well, the show had ended. Mm. <laughs> and I said to myself, I'm not going to get into that situation again. Aww. And over the period, I've watched people who have, are very good with what they do, and I've picked up a lot along, along the line. So that's, I mean, all these things made me want to do that. But when I came back to Ghana, so I did a bit of training around media, but all were pushing me towards general. Journalism, you mm. know, you don't really find um, at the time. I think it's still the same thing where you're just being trained on going on TV or just going on radio to do uh, a talk show or yeah. whatever. It's all about the real reportage, journalism, mm. and all that. So I did a bit of training. Then I went to. Um, then the two had freshly started. Okay. And because I went to that two because I tried to get in, and everybody was like, "Do you have experience?" I'm like, "No." They were like, "No, we don't want. Oh, wow. We need somebody who have who has experience." <laughs> and I didn't have the experience. So I thought about it. I was wow. like. Oh, how can I get in? And my family and everything said, why don't you start as an intern? I mean, do it for free. Just go in there. Yeah. If you do your best, somebody will notice and, you know, help you up. So the two had started taking people. It got to a point they closed the doors to that. So if you want to come in, you have to work for free or mm -hmm. they will not pay you for that. So I entered, um, started, and truly I wasn't paid for anything. It wasn't an internship. I was in there. For I think a year or two and okay. no payment. So I worked for free, wake up at dawn, go that, 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 that. And I gained my experience. Mm. So along the line, there was a day my friend who was here at the time at City FM, he's called Moro Audio. He called oh, and Moro. said, oh, we're looking for people, fresh people, with mm. young people, vibrant people with fresh ideas da, da, da. at City FM. Do you want to be part? I was like, yes. <laughs> Finally. And you know, then I noticed City <laughs> FM, they had the branded new cars, the okay. pickups, the white cars. Okay. I'm like, mm, I want to be part of this. But okay. of course, they, they didn't, when I tried, I didn't come here specifically, but if you asked, everybody was like, you know, forget it, you're not getting in. So I was like, yes, I'm going to come. So I came in and Samez did an interview on me. Mm. And I remember so much. I had spelled city with a famous Y. Right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's a way to not get the job. <laughs> I don't know why. Why I do that? I mean, I, maybe the excitement or my whatever, folly or whatever. And then he looked open, uh, looked at my application, and I was like, you want to be part of, you can't even spell, get our name correct, and you want to be part of this. And I was like, this is right. So I was like, okay. So he did a few, asked me a few questions and yeah. all that. Because I, I knew uh, that was it for me. I wasn't going to get it. Because even me now, when people send letters with the yeah, word, I'm like, are, are, you, are you even are you serious? serious? <laughs> Claire, you don't know. But I think my excuse was it was new and all that. So maybe he forgave me. Yeah. Or maybe he saw something. Yeah. And then he was, so I was, during the interview, I was like, this is it. With what he said, you, you're not even going to get it with this Y thing. Then we had the interview with Diddy. Then he said, okay, I'm going to take you. We're going to try you for a month, three wow. months of probation wow. period. Wow. And then so start, you know, the next one. I was like, yes! Yay! And I remember my first pay was um, 350 cities. Okay. 350 cities. And okay. I was happy. Wait, how old were you then? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you want me to disclose like my age? Late twenties, early twenties. Oh, early, um, um, early twenties, okay. I think. Early twenties. I was happy, not because of the money bit. You know, working. I mean, in London, I worked. I was paid for it, and all that. Wherever I'd been, I was worked and paid. But the thought of having something, you know, really official yes. now, and yes. um, something to claim that is mine, yes. and the thought that for. For what I wanted to do, now somebody He's was going to pay me for it. For it. Yeah. And, and this has been, you know, formalized. And I was excited. And I remember I used to walk from city to circle to pick um, a okay. car. Wow. Yeah, I've tried. I've done the bus, the trotro. I've done the taxis. I've done whatever. <laughs> 
And over the period, I mean, the trotter, you sit in it forever, it won't yeah. get full. Because yeah. I lived at Tesh and Guy States, and they had a loading car over there. Wow. And there was this, you know, the pickpockets, the circle thing. It's been there forever, and it's not going to wow. change. Yeah. 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 And we used to walk to a circle after work. We used to close late because, you know, and I always say, with media or with journalism, there are a lot of us in there. Mm. If you want to put your foot into the door, you have to sacrifice, yeah. do a lot of things to get noticed because yeah. there's so many of you. What makes you different from the other? Articulation, mm. people articulate confidence, people have it. So we went all out. I mean, at the time we joined, the, the, um, you had to prove yourself. Mm. You had to prove yourself. But the good thing about City, or the good thing about Cement, he will allow you to prove yourself. Yeah. Let's see what you got. Yeah. He was not going to say, oh, you're a woman, or you're a man, you're old, you're young, or you have this. Let's see what you, you yeah. have. And then that's where you need to prove yourself. So um, after a while, I mean, what the second, da, 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 then we started in a night shift. I mean, I could go on. Let me just pause, then you ask your yes. question. I don't Speaking want to Speaking of <laughs> long hours, how do you make time to socialize? Because you're here from morning till evening. Socialization. Mm. I'm not, you know, I've lost a lot of friends along the line because wow. I don't get time yeah. to have... I've had relatives who don't deal with me or don't call me for any event. They don't call me for um, the, the, ba the naming of the children or a party because they know I'm not going to turn up. I mean, the reality is I come in, I wake up at four, come in as early as I have to be, yeah. to be on air or whatever, and close late. That's what it is. So you don't get time to socialize, but at the same time, you have family that you need to deal with. I always say that when people say, how do you juggle the two? I say, it's difficult to juggle the two because uh, I find myself in a profession where that profession, to be able to penetrate, to be able to rise, to be able to you know, when you have to really worship this God. Mm. So you have your work, this journalism mm. thing, a real God, and then your family, which is another God. Mm -hmm. How do you worship two gods big like gods that, at yeah. the same time? And if they're small gods, yeah. But two gods at the same time, no. So I always say that I don't do the juggling. I pick as and when. So this week, it's this God. The okay. weekend is that God. Okay. And the weekend, if you, the other God comes, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not a <laughs> Stay away. But, you know, the, the two gods also allow for you to deal with the other a little bit mm. as you go along. So what I've made a conscious effort to do is weekends is for my family. Mm. Or um, after a certain amount of hours, so after 10, 11, or 12, which is usually not the case, but after 12, yeah. It's for my family. But when the call comes in, when the breaking news comes, whether it's weekend or whatever, you have to leave and go. Mm. So it's, it's what it is. So it's very difficult to juggle it. Sometimes weekends you have a program, you have a wedding, you need to go to a party, but you're so tired, like yeah. your feet hurt, your body aches and all that, your eyes don't want to open. And I always say, <laughs> but you need to go. Mm. So you, you have to sacrifice, wake up and go, but sometimes the body gives in and I can't, so I have to sleep. So it's, it's very difficult to juggle. What I can say is um, if you find yourself in uh, media or journalism for that matter, for a woman, you need to marry well or date well. And I'm not saying marry a rich man or whatever. What I'm saying is you need to find somebody who will be supportive of what you do. Mm. So, for example, if I had a family or a husband who is the, the typical or the traditional man who you have to cook for every day, and this job is impossible for you. know, there's a men, the food must be fresh oh, every fresh day. Fresh and hot. If it's not, forget it. Yeah. If I had a man like that, I'm not sure I would have survived this. Fortunately for me, God being so good, he gave me a man who has always wanted me to rise, who's supportive of what I do, who doesn't wait for me to come and prepare dinner before he eats, who weekends knows I'm tired, I need to sleep, and you, when he's even opening the door, he tiptoes because Aww. he doesn't want to wake me up and all that. Who, um, when my alarm goes off and I'm struggling to wake up to come to work, you'll be like, no, you can do it, don't give up, just get up, the day will wow. be over soon. You know, wow. you need to marry or date properly for somebody like that to support you. If not, and it's a job that you're seeing a lot, you're out there and all that, you need somebody who won't be jealous of that, mm. who will see it as a beautiful thing, who will be yeah. proud for you. Mm. If you get somebody who you're rising, everybody is calling, because my phone can be going on. <laughs> I speak to all kinds of people in all kinds of places, and he's not confident himself, not happy for you. <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. Vivian, we need to bring you back. But thank you <laughs> thank so you much. Too. We are so proud of you. And even you existing alone is enough for young women all over this country to be inspired that if Vivian can do it, 
you have no excuse. She started her journey of working for free, right? So sometimes it takes just working for free to acquire the skills that you need yeah. to apply to that job that will pay you what you deserve. Thank you guys so much for staying with us on this segment. My name is Jifa Ekea Ametan. And I'm David Krikusi. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive Breakfast Daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.